Thanks for joining us on the weekend edition of National Focus. I'm Kanisha St. Louis. Coming up, work ongoing on a major road project in Grand Bay. The Environmental Health Department on a national drive to combat the threat of the Zika virus. And the Dominica Social Security System doing well according to reports. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after this. Thanks for staying with us. Work is progressing satisfactorily on a very important road project in Grand Bay. The back road in center is being surfaced and when GIS News visited the project earlier this week, there was a special attention being paid to the construction of drains. The Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the Grand Bay constituency, Justina Charles, spoke with us about the importance of the project. The government has approved so far 100, I think it's $101,000 towards that project, but definitely it's going to cost more than that. Um, because when we initially we were looking at surfacing it, but we really cannot surface without doing the drainage because for anything to last, the drainage is critical. So we thought we would have paid some attention on the drainage prior to surfacing it. And so the wind, I have already spoken to the Minister of Finance, really $100,000, which is not sufficient. So we require, he has in fact agreed to give me another 40 some 40 48 or so thousand dollars but we still have a small piece higher up at my back that is not part of that contract that we have to pay attention to so definitely something that we have to be doing in phases and to see that we can complete it to bring some level of ease to the people who are living around that area so that they can traverse to and from their homes with, with more ease knowing that they've paid for the land all of those people around they're really paid in full for their land and so we want to bring that level of comfort to them so i am happy at least the project is going through and i'm hoping that i can um, tap the risk get the resources to see it to completion the grand bay primary school library has come alive the old library with the assistance of peace corps volunteers in the grand bay area has been refurbished at an opening ceremony at the school on Thursday, the Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the Grand Bay Constituency, Justina Charles, added an even greater learning incentive to complement the new library. She made donations of seven tablet computers to the school to complement reading and research at the new library. I can only ask of the students and all those who will be using it and the library too, to take very good care of the tablets because it is for you not to destroy not to play games because that is what we know most of the students spend time on using the thing to play games to listen to music is to learn to do research to be able to open documents to be able to learn prepare you so by the time you move into phl secondary school you will be familiar with the use of the information technology with the computer she noted education as critical in building human resource capacity. She expects that the re-establishment of the library will result in a greater success in the students' academic achievements. We still have small pockets of illiteracy on island, and I am happy that we are working towards eradicating it totally. Too often we find students still live in primary school, moving into secondary school, and not able to read and to work at the level of the secondary school students. We are hoping that um, with the establishment of the library, that this is one of the areas, one of the avenues in which we can really work to eradicate that thing. So I am hoping that next time we work with the, next time I speak to prime, do the, do the, PHR secondary school teachers and principal, they will be able to say, as a result of the work that the Grand Bay Primary School is doing, that we do not have any student walking in into the PHR secondary school and not able to match up to the work of the first form students. Principal of the school, Evans James, highlighted the current activities the school has undertaken to promote reading. These include an intense reading program, spelling competitions, and annual literacy week. His hope is that the new library will further strengthen the reading skills of the students and ultimately help them excel at the grade 6 national assessment. The effective use of the library will definitely help improve our grades at the national assessment to meet our target of 100% of our students reading at grade level or above. In more news, the Chief Environmental Health Officer, Anthony Scotland, has assured the general public that the unit is doing all in its power to combat the threat of Zika to the island. Scotland was speaking at a press conference on Wednesday. 
The environmental health department, um, here you know the, the threat, the early of Zika in the, in the, um, the region, where we met in December, early in December, with the other stakeholders like National Press and Health Promotion, as alluded by the PS, and put a, a, a program in place to look at how we can we could, we could have maybe nullify the threat or even enter to manage it. And some of the, the um, objectives of that program is to Im implement a comprehensive education program on AIDS AGPT management, testing for resistance to ensure that the chemicals that we use are to control mosquitoes are effective, conduct source reduction activities to eliminate AIDS AGPT breeding foci, and fogging operations to destroy the, the life adults, population in the communities. Officers of the EHU have been conducting education programs, block meetings have been held, sessions at clinics, schools, and with food handlers have also been conducted. The unit is also taking an individual approach. Home visits, which is critical, they, they link up again with National Person to my company to ensure that people are educated at home. Because one of the strategies for it is, is an individual approach where people are informed these are the ways that you can manage mosquitoes at your home. He revealed, however, that government has already begun activities to manage the vector. The fogging operation will come in because we have also looked at intensifying fogging in the high risk areas that we identify around the island. And fogging has been has started in the Roseau district. So from Scott Z back down to Newton, Rosa Central, Goodwill, operation has been, has been done in terms of fogging. And also we have targeted areas like Marigot Health District and the Postal Health District. These are the, two, these are the major areas that we, we see initially to work on in terms of fogging. Scotland is also asking the public to do their part in terms of the threat of exposed tires, drums and other containers. He says the EHU is taking this drive to combat the mosquito problem very seriously. People have to understand that the legislation also tells you that you can be charged and confined for breeding mosquitoes at your home. It's actually a criminal offense to breed mosquitoes at your home. So it's critical that people start getting that into the head. It's just a normal, it's like... We, I, over the years, I just see like people take it as a, as a joke. Or oh, they'll just show you where they, where they look at drum there, or oh, it brings mosquitoes, we have to put something in it. We need to get out of, out, of that, out, of that, out of that system. We need to take it serious that this is a vector that can cause illness and death to you and your family and, and your neighbors. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Protection from abuse is every child's right. Everyone has a shared responsibility in protecting the child from abuse. Mothers, believe your children when they say they've been abused and follow through with child abuse cases when they've been reported. For more information on child abuse or to report suspected cases on child abuse, contact the Social Welfare Division on 33 Great Marlborough Street or call 266-3020 or 266-3080. Welcome back. The Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force is taking a three-pronged approach to Carnival 2016. This is according to Chief of Police, Daniel Carbon. Our first approach has been sensitizing members of the public, sharing information, using the media to educate, educate members of the public as to what we expect from them, and what we do not expect from them. And we have used the media to call on every carnival reveler, every onlooker who will be observing carnival, those who will be participating in carnival. We have gone as far as meeting with all the electronic bands and asking for everybody's support. The police cannot police carnival by themselves alone. 
The second approach is in the area of intelligence gathering, where members of the public are encouraged to report any suspicious behavior to the police. And the third is police present felt all around carnival-related activities. Assistant Superintendent of Police Richmond Valentine says this year, carnival will be policed in a manner that allows for no opportunity for criminal activity. I strongly caution those with criminal minds that from the onset of any semblance of disorderly conduct or violence, the police officers who are on the streets will intervene and you will be taken away to a place of safety for the duration of the carnival activity leading up to the two days of jump up. And I will go further to say that the presence of the police will not only be seen, but it will be felt. ASP Valentine says there will be zero tolerance for the use of weapons during the two dates of street parades. The carnival order says that a weapon of offense, or it describes the weapon of offense as follows. Any stick, stone, knife, cutlass, I speak, scissors, screwdriver, and most importantly, bottle, glass bottle, whether empty or full. So on the two days of jump up, as I said some time ago, if you are a mechanic, leave your tools at your house. Because you will have no justifiable reason when you are accosted in a band by a police officer after you have been searched that you are a mechanic. That will not be a justifiable reason. So leave your tools in your toolkit at your house. The Honorable Minister for National Security, Raven Blackmore, says that government will continue to assist police with the resources for surveillance. We intend to have the installation of security cameras as a permanent fixture within the national security infrastructure of the island. And the installation of those cameras will not be limited only to Roseau, but other parts of the country. Dominica's social security system, currently in its 40th year, is an institution of which to be proud. Deputy Director of the DSS, Augustus Etienne, told the GIS, Dominica's social security is comparable to other bodies in the region. In some ways, we are ahead of them in many respects. Some of them have difficulty making their benefit payments because we have Dominicans who worked in places like Antigua, and sometimes they've had to call on us to follow up with the offices in Antigua to find out what's happening with their pension because some time has passed and they have not received payments. But we haven't had that difficulty here. In fact, our payments are ahead of time in advance. We make those payments in advance. So, but a lot of the systems are kind of comparable. Some of them are different states of financial health. Um, most of them might be better off in terms of the health of their fund itself because their population is larger than ours and so on. But in terms of how we do what we do, we, do, we think we do very well. Etienne told the GIS News that the system is only getting better, but its success depends on the loyalty of contributors. People have a better appreciation for social security. Maybe because we've made a greater effort to explain to people what it is that we're doing and why we do it. But I think we are getting better. There is still room for improvement because there are still some people out there who find ways to avoid and evade social security. But we are, all of the public education we're doing is with a view to trying to erase all of that so that everybody will understand and appreciate the purpose of social security and play their role in ensuring that they do what they're supposed to in relation to the program so that they themselves and those for whom they are paying contributions can in fact benefit when the time comes. The DSS is proud of its profitable investments, which has so far supplemented and sustained the fund. The institution's primary plan for its future is to improve its investment portfolio. In the aftermath of the 2008 um, economic crisis globally, the opportunities for suitable investments are few and far between now. So we have to find new avenues for us to invest monies that we have available so as to generate returns. But, um, we cannot afford to lose 
our contributors' money because these monies we are collecting are to be held in trust to be able to pay them their benefits when the time comes down the road. So that all our investments we make have to, we have to be assured that we'll be able to recover our principal investment. The DSS is consistently monitoring the program and making adjustments to keep it relevant and sustainable. The fund is supposed to continue in perpetuity. It has to be available to take care of the last surviving contributor. It's not something that you expect to be there for a while and disappear. It has to continue. Because we are required to undertake an actuarial review every three years, the actuary is able to assess what is happening to the population, to the economy, what is happening to Social Security itself in terms of the level of contributions it's collecting, the level of benefits it's paying, to make projections and recommendations to propel the fund for another 60 years, to ensure that the fund is sustainable for the next 60 years. And to the extent that they do this every time and they make recommendations and we heed those recommendations, act on them in a timely manner, then we can expect the fund to continue in perpetuity really. In more news, Director of Primary Health Care Services, Dr. Laura Esprit, says her division is adopting preventative measures as a critical aspect in Dominica's fight against the Zika virus. She was addressing a media conference held on Wednesday to discuss the threat of Zika virus to the island. Primary Health Care and by extension the Ministry of Health heeds WHO's warning that the Zika virus has become a public health emergency of international concern. So this is not just localized to Dominica or the region. It's an international concern. And this is particularly important not only because it's potential for rapid spread, but also for the serious birth and neurological complications that are associated. Consequently, primary health care has seen it fit to upscale its effort in focusing primarily on preventative strategies. Dr. Esprit describes some of the measures. The Zika response has been activated in all districts across the island, with no exception, all districts. Primary health care has begun its drive to sensitize its staff from since December of last year. We've had meetings, we've had PowerPoint presentations, and this was done in an effort to provide the necessary tools to the health team so that each district could develop what we call a district Zika plan. Further to that, information is being fed continuously, so it doesn't stop, continuously to the district to keep them appraised of the international developments as this disease is concerned and the recommended strategies and approaches by organizations such as WHO, PAHO, and even CAFA. Moreover, district teams have been advised to and is currently using this disseminated information as teaching tools to sensitize all categories of staff at the district level as well as the general public. Primary Health Care Admin Team has begun visiting each district to review its implementation plan with the objective of strengthening their Zika response also ready to make necessary changes to the plans as the surveillance response heightens. Collaborative and integrated efforts are ongoing as we work with all stakeholders since it is recognized that this is the best practice in confronting this disease. And of course, active surveillance are ongoing. Let's now join Kimani Seja for a recap of the week's headlines. Welcome to this week's edition of Flashback. In the headlines this week, donations of ASUS tablets were made to grade 6 students of both the Caleb John Laura and Western District SDA Primary Schools on Monday. Honorable Minister for Telecommunications, Science and Technology, who is also the Parliamentary Representative for the St. Joseph Constituency, Kelva Daru, made the presentations. An agreement was signed between the Academy of Martinique and the Ministry of Education in Dominica to foster cooperation between the two countries in the field of education. Outgoing director of the Alliance Francaise, Stanislas Reiner, described the link as necessary considering Dominica's close ties with the neighboring French islands. Also this week, we learned that government is pumping $12.5 million into upgrades to the island's main ports. The project will see changes begin at the northern ports first, and the entire task will take place over a period of 12 months. 
The Library and Information Service launched Black History Month this week. Black History Month celebrates the achievements of black people. The focus this year will be on teaching black history at schools. At a Dominica Labour Party meeting this week, the Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the St. Joseph constituency confirmed that Cabinet has approved over $6 million for Cahom Mirror Road rehabilitation. Also this week, the Government of Dominica and the Lions Club of Roseau received three 40-foot containers of building materials and other supplies to continue assisting those affected by Tropical Storm Erica. This gift, worth over half a million dollars, is from the Dominica Disaster Relief Committee on St. Thomas. Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt has called for the peaceful celebration of Mass Dominic 2016. He made this call during a DLP public meeting on Tuesday this week. The Pan American Health Organization has once again contributed to Dominica's post Erica recovery efforts. On Wednesday, local country program specialist for PAHO, Shirley Augustine, presented the Ministry of Health and Environment with a vehicle and fogging machines worth well over $140,000. Dominica's International Relief Coordinator, Baroness Patricia Scotland, returned to the island this week with international expertise to aid with post erica rec reconstruction. The Baroness and her team met with government officials and stakeholders of various sectors including agriculture and public works and also spoke with the committees and subcommittees related to the effort. These were some of the headline stories making the news this week. For details of each of these stories and others, visit our website or Facebook page. It's back to Kadisha. Thanks, Kimani. And that's the English segment of the news. Macfest in St. Louis is up next with the Creole Highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à cette nouvelle en Creole, non moins c'est Macfest in St. Louis. Premièrement, l'école Premier Gouan B est appelée assistance au lien en bibliothèque with Bati. Et on peut se volontaire qui a travaillé en Wang Gouan B, assisté pour lui Bati facilité là. L'école la chaîne en cérémonie jeudi où la facilité l'a ouvert. Même parlement pour Gouan B, Honorable Justin Charles, a donné cérémonie pour te ouvrir facilité là. Nous tenions la libre, mais ça c'était longtemps, et bien, il n'y a pas de manœuvre qui est supposé. Donc nous n'y avons pas de travail pour nous actuellement à l'école. Ce que ça fait, c'est pour ranger la librairie encore, et pour faire plus, pour faire important pour ces légions, apprécier, pour tirer, pour supposer read. Ce que ça fait, c'est pour faire relevant pour le présent temps. Nous savons actuellement que les légions n'ont pas aimé read. Mais nous n'avons pas fait attractif, nous n'avons pas fait dans la manière où nous avons sorti. Donc, il a acheté le livre, il a mis en libre, il a mis en libre, on a une nouvelle Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, fait donation en voie pour le ministre de la Santé. Selon le secrétaire du Parlement en ministre de la Santé, Honorable Ivo Stevenson, voie a qui servi pour l'opération Fogging, pour les maladies comme Zika et plusieurs d'autres qui ont affecté les gens. Avec ça, nous avons parlé de continuer à recevoir le support de la Pan American Health Organization. PAHO, c'est une organisation qui a toujours a supporté les gens en défendant des affaires pour faire la santé, spécialement des affaires pour faire la santé publique. Et puis, nous avons vu qu'actuellement, quand nous avons tapé une maladie de 9 ans entre Dominique, nous avons tapé une bonne chance de PAHO. Après, nous avons eu un mauvais temps, Tropical Storm Erica. Nous avons eu un mauvais temps, nous avons eu un mauvais temps, nous avons eu un mauvais temps. Il y a une organisation qui connaît la qualité de la maladie, ça a mené. Il y a un transport neuf, un Nissan double cab, et puis il y a des fogas. Et puis ça qui aide nous à la ministre de l'Help pour manager la disease Zika. Dans la nouvelle, la police de Dominique a vu une commission bien forte par le public là, qui a eu des assises et qui a eu des pièces de monde fait des bagages et violences pendant deux jours, John Pop, Lady et puis Maddy. Si l'on assistant superintendent police Richmond Valentine, moun ka tape vêtisman pou pa vini an ban la e pi bagay feman kon icebreaker, ciseau, nail file ou ben screwdriver. 
et des mondes pas que les pièces raison justification pour venir en ban et puis se faire ma salam. Valentin aussi fait pas wall qui tout fait mon supposé rester à caille en des choses là. Moun qui croise loi là, police qui arrête yo et puis yo pique des wall juste mercredi les sons. Valentin qui a aussi cru à ce Wivendez qui a porté des bois et puis manger qui yo pas supposé vendre bois en bouteille glace. Je suis posé vendre en bouteille plastique pito. Police a sollicité la coopération publique là pour un bon carnaval la paix l'année sala. Finalement, Dominican Air Support Authority d'Aspa a fait parole qui avait oui commencé à poser la nuit en basse avec Douglas Charles. Parole sala sur le General Manager d'Aspa, M. Benoît Badwell. Nous avons commencé à. Um Night landing à uh, Douglas Charles parce que nous nous mettons clété uh, parce que clété a um, uh, toutes ces lumières qui dommagé à uh, uh, Tropical Storm Erica avec il dit que pour si nous te ça mettez vivre comme que était avant uh, il dit que pour on puisse presque en aller avec gouvernement avec um, vrai, com, vraiment nous ça mettez ça nous a créé renewable energy lights et uh, solar avec ce gouvernement en mettre en solar light des points quand six cinq pour six semaines pour faire avec nous mettre um, en, en disant trois jours avec um, avant um, nous là nous nous te mettre clarté à et tout bagarre en ordre à présent comme que nous avons trouvé un uh, uh, avion cabine um, le soir mais mesdames ça c'est toute pour nouvelle en créole pour à présent non moi c'est Mac pour ce c'est Louis car c'est tout le monde un bon week-end et au bon saison mars. Au revoir. Coming up next, tips to help keep your household safe during Master Dominique 2016. Tip 1. Ensure that you secure your premises. Tip 2. Do not leave keys in mailboxes or under doormats. Tip 3. Have a friend or relative check on the household periodically. Tip 4. Teach your children to lock the doors when they enter. And tip 5. Ensure that the property is illuminated at night. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica and follow our Twitter at gisdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News Production team, I'm Kadisha Senhui. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.